Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number four in our new Arduino tutorial series where we're going to teach you to build an IMU system based on a non-axis inertial measurement sensor. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice big bug of iced coffee and I'm going to need you to get out your gear where we left off in lesson number three. Let me move out of your way a little bit here. And just a quick reminder and a recap, we are using the most excellent Adafruit BNO055 non-axis sensor, and we have it hooked to an Arduino Nano. We like using the Nano because we can get a very clean build, which is important on a complicated project like this. If you go back through the earlier lessons, we show you it's very easy to hook the sensor up. It's an I2C sensor which means you just need two connections, uh, SCL and SDA, and we showed you how to do that in the uh, earlier lesson. So we need you to go and get your setup where we left off in lesson number three, which was, I believe, like this. Okay, and uh, where we had this was we showed you here how to get the code where you can talk to the BNO 055 and actually start pulling data off of it. And the data that, that we're pulling off of it here are the three axes of acceleration. Acceleration in the X, acceleration in the Y, and acceleration in the Z. And in those earlier lessons, we showed you that if you move this thing around, you can sort of see data here that makes sense. Okay, that's where we left off in lesson number three, but this is our problem. As this project goes on, it's going to get more and more and more complicated, and we're not just going to be pulling three channels of data because this is a non-axis sensor. We'll be getting three of acceleration, three from the gyros, and three from the magnetometers. That's nine data streams that we're going to be getting, plus there's four channels that have data associated with the calibration. So it's going to be a total of 13 channels. And if we're just sitting here streaming these things, passed on the screen, you simply are not going to be able to make heads or tails out of the data. So we need some way to visualize the data. Now you can sort of do it if you just go up to the serial plotter on the Arduino IDE, but the problem with using the serial plotter is you have no ability to set control the y-axis, and the y-axis is continuously auto scales. So when you're looking at the data, you don't know if you're seeing the data change or just the scale change. So so we need to move forward a much better way to visualize the data. So I am going to show you today how to <coughs> download some software that is very, very handy for doing just this thing. So I will need you to pull up a browser and let's see. Uh, here we go. Get you a nice browser. And this is how you find the software. The easiest way to find it is to search on the site hackaday.io. And so you can type into the browser site colon hackaday.io. Okay. And then to search on that site, you just put a space and then type in serial space plotter. So site hackaday.io space serial space plotter. And when you do that, the first thing that comes up, at least for me, is this software. It's at hackaday.io slash project slash 5334. So that'll show you that you have the right one. So if you click on that, you will come to this page, and this is the software we want, the real-time plotting software. Now, I am on a Windows 64-bit machine, so I'm going to scroll down. <coughs> These are the different packages that you can download. For me, I want to get this serial plot for win64.exe. You know, there's other things for other things. For me, this is the one I'm going to get. Get the one that's suitable for you. Now, if you look down here, in the lower left of your browser, you can see that it's downloaded, downloading, and in fact, this downloaded really quickly. So if you are on a different browser, it might not show up right there, but go to your downloads folder and you want to find that serialplot.exe. And then I am going to click on it. And of course, when I click on it, it is going to ask me 
whether I want to let this program change my computer or not. So I will click yes. Okay, so it wants to know, is it okay to let this software modify my computer? I say yes. Now we're going to go through the normal next. I agree, have no idea what I'm agreeing to. Next, next, and then install. Okay, takes just a second to install, and then I can say finish. Now what I can do is I can come over here to my start, scroll down, and I should find that serial plot folder under the S's. Okay, so here we have a serial plot. All right and now I'm going to run Serial Plotter. Okay, boom, it pops right up. So now let's jump into this and see if we can figure out how to use this software. It really is really, really slick software. So a couple of things that are very, very, very important. you got to remember that only one thing at a time can interact with your serial port. And so what we need to do is we need to come over here to our serial monitor that the Arduino was running and kill that because this serial plot software cannot go out and uh, you know do anything until you free up the serial port. The other thing we need to see is which serial port are we on. So on the Arduino IDE I come under tools okay and then I look and I see that my Arduino is on COM5 okay my Arduino is on COM5 alright so now I know that I'm interacting on COM5 well if you come over here and let's just look at it you see that it kinda comes up with a default of COM1 well I'm not gonna find anything there so if I click on this Okay, you see it also sees a serial port on COM5, and so I want to select that one. All right, and then I think that we might need to give it a second, and then we are going to click open and hope we see something come to life. If it doesn't, ah, look at that. Boom! You see that? We got data coming in live live data from the serial monitor and actually this kind of makes sense remember that we were where we left off we were streaming three channels of acceleration data and it looks like up top in green that we've got that Z and then we've got the X and we've got the Y okay now how does it get this well what it's doing is it's just pulling off that data that you were sending from the Arduino so let's go back and just remind ourselves where we left off with with that Arduino program. Okay, let's go back and look. And you remember that after doing the measurements up here, we did a print of acceleration in X, we printed a comma, we printed acceleration in Y, we printed a comma, and then acceleration in Z. But on the last one, we did a print LN. So it sort of does print, 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 and then end line, and then that's the data chunk that is grabbed by the uh, by this serial plotting program. And so let's go through and look at a little bit of this and some of the stuff that's important. First of all, you have to make your baud rate on the serial plotter software match the baud rate that you were using in Arduino. And we can just verify that if we come back to Arduino and we come up here and we look at our serial.begin 115,200. Okay, very good, very good. That's uh, that's the same thing that we are using here. Now this usually, I never really fool with this and it seems to work with the no parity 8 bits, one stop bit, no flow control. I don't know, there's probably some things you could tweak there, but just those default settings seem to work. Now let's go to the next tab and look at data format. Well, it seems to see that I have three channels coming in, which I do in hat fact have three channels coming in but if that's not what you have you need to adjust this so that uh, you have this matching how you sent the data right we did a print a print a print and then we did a print you know print print and print line so you got to make sure that the data channels match and also you see here that we're telling it it was default was right but this has to match how you separated the data so if we come back over to Arduino 
what did we put between our data points? We put commas. So over here on ser Serial Plotter, we've got to tell it that we're using a comma delimiter. Now let's look at our plot data. Looks like it gives us some ability to uh, adjust what these labels are here. And so let's go in. What order did we send the data in? Well, we sent the data as first x and then y and then z. So let's make these labels match that. So I'm going to double click and say uh, x excel or yeah I'm going to say x acceleration and I don't want to just say x, y, and z because we're going to be plotting more things later. y acceleration and then the third channel is z acceleration. Okay, that looks pretty good now. You can look and you can see you can control how many data points you know are streaming across the screen screen so once you get 500 data points then they start moving off. So it kind of controls how much data you see. Let's say what if I change this to 250 it should move a little bit quicker. Uh, okay, yeah, I think that's gonna. I think that's gonna work. Now let's actually look and start seeing if we're really getting data and if it's really making sense. And so what I am going to do is I am going to tilt about the y-axis. Boom! Look at that. When I tilt about the y-axis, what is changing? Y acceleration. Well, also Z acceleration is changing because Z is affected, right? Z is up and down. And when I tilt along Z, Z is seeing less and less of the Earth's gravitational force. Now, you guys, I really sort of explained why you see what you're seeing in uh, lesson number three, how accelerometers work. And so you need to go back and look at that if, if you don't have that kind of fresh on, your, uh, fresh on your mind. That was lesson number three. We're in lesson number four right now. But let's also just see if this is acting as an accelerometer. So if I move it in X, what do we see changing? X accelerometer. If I move it in Y, what do we see changing? Y accelerometer. And if I move it in Z, what do we see changing? Z accelerometer. Do you see how powerful this is that we are able to get nice clean plots? And also what I want you to see is I can control the scale. And so uh, let me just let me just kind of show you. Let's let's uh, let's let's come in here. And on this auto scale, all right, where do we want to go on auto scale? Certainly not where it is there. But the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 okay, meters per second squared. And that's why when it's sitting there seeing the Earth's gravitational vector, you're at about 10. But let's go from like minus 12 and let's go to plus 12. That looks pretty good, right? Now let's move this. Okay. Okay. Oh, look, as I'm moving Z, I'm missing some of the data. So I better go, let's say, minus 15 to 15 units of meters per second squared. Okay. And still I'm not getting it all, so maybe I should go from minus 20 to 20. Do you see how easy it is to adjust this? Okay back up here and now we're going to go like this and you see I'm getting all the data I'm not losing any of the data but yet I can still nicely see how this thing is going and so let's try to do a roll around the y-axis what's really cool y is changing and z is changing okay now that it's completely upside down what is the z-axis accelerometer seeing it's seeing the negative of the Earth's gravitational force because it's upside down, right side up, upside down, right side up. Do you see how that Z, the green, makes perfect sense? Now let's kind of look at the Y. Okay, I'm vertical, and so now the blue is seeing the 1G, or the 9.8 meters per second squared. Now Y is upside down. Okay, Y is right side up. Y is upside down. Now let's look at X. Make sure that's working. Okay, X has got the 
and then I will turn X upside down and now it is seeing things negatively. Okay, do you guys see how powerful this is? And I'll tell you, this little serial plot software, it is not just useful for Arduino. If you're doing Python programming or other things, anything that you can send to the serial port, you can graph here. If you have a standalone sensor that, that talks over the, the, the serial port, you can use it. And so I think this is just really, really, really cool. Let's see, there's some other things that we can do. I don't think that we really need to get into any of this stuff. I think that you kind of just got the basics. Make sure that your baud rate matches. Okay, make sure that your baud rate matches. Make sure that you are on the right serial port when you're using this. And then most importantly, make sure that you kill the serial monitor on the Arduino. Now what I'm not sure of, let's just try this because this might also be important. I'm not sure if you can download while the serial, uh, yeah, okay. This is the other thing you gotta be careful of. Once we are running the serial plotter, we have locked up that serial port and while we have it locked up, you can't download. So what do you do in that case? You come over, you kill the serial port Okay, the serial monitor, and now if we come over and try to download, boom, it works. Okay, guys, what I want you to do is I want you your homework is to just play around and uh, you know maybe send just two data channels and then you know change the code where you're just sending two data channels and then change things on the serial plotter where it works with just two. Play around with your graphs, play around with your scales, maybe even hook up a different sensor like in some of our earlier lessons we worked with some other sensors like the distance sensor and just get comfortable using the serial plotter because we're not only going to be using it on this Arduino IMU series of tutorials, we're going to be using it on future projects as well. Okay guys, Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.